Welcome to Magical Moments with Elena Chapman, the place for you to break free from the norm and celebrate your life because what we believe in our hearts becomes our reality. This is Magical Moments with Elena Chapman. Welcome to Magical Moments. I'm your host, Elena Chapman, and as you know, this show is all about that ease and that betterment in your life, which you really do deserve. And I'll tell you, we have such an exciting show for you today. I'm very excited about this guest. I'm going to put our magical nugget towards the end of our broadcast today. Why? Because I want to get her on. I think this is going to be an exciting, exciting information for you. And I think you're going to gleam a whole lot of nuggets throughout the show. But let me not detain this any longer. Her name is Paula Kid Casey. She's known as the lawyer of attraction. You've got to love that right there. <laughs> she, she was, and I find this so interesting, was a practicing family law attorney for 40 years. And guys, you know, we always have that second coming, I call it, because look at me, I was in music for 35 years, and she was in, okay, hold on, Kayla, you'll have to take the dog growling out, please, okay. And you know, we all have that time when we switch because we get a calling, well, so did Paula, so for 40 years, and she was one of the first women in the Midwest to open a private law firm, which is pretty darn impressive. Like many driven entrepreneurs, Paula spent years pursuing money and success, don't we all, at the expense of her health and peace of mind. That is incredible. After realizing her professional life was not bringing her joy and fulfillment, she then spent years defining her passion and searching for ways to achieve it. Mm. Through countless hours of study, she discovered life-changing information based on the natural laws of the universe. You know, I've mentioned these natural laws. These are laws that run the whole universe, guys. We're going to learn more about that today. They are incredible, and you're going to see how they apply in our lives every day. We don't even know it. We are all powerful creators, she says, capable of more than we've ever imagined. I love that. And with that, I'm bringing on Paula Kid Casey. Hello, Paula. How are you? Hello, Alina. I am so darn excited to be on your show today. I appreciate the invitation. I appreciate you. I'm overwhelmed by your biography and what you have done. I, I did some research on you because like you said, I'm an attorney. So that's what I did for forever. And we have so much in common. We have so many friends in common. I know Me that you've too. worked with Bob Proctor personally. And, I and I, there's, there's a reason that we're here together. So I yeah, want to thank you so much. Well, I'm just so happy to have you on because, um, you know, I, I just adore Bob. And when I heard that you were also mentored by Bob, I thought, oh, my gosh, we must know so many people in common. And we both have this wonderful person that helped. I was also for a long time mentored by Wayne Dyer. I don't know if you have that in your pocket. Also. No, I don't have that in my pocket. I know <laughs> Mike Dooley. Do you know who Mike Dooley is? I do know Mike Yeah, I, he was my first mentor. So he's a dear oh. friend and I love him. So we stay in touch. So I love it. So we're in this world of the law of attraction and, and me, the spirituality. And now, you know, being a lawyer, most lawyers I know, well, actually, I do think they ask why, but they don't stop what they're doing. But you were at the point where you were asking, well, what's the purpose? Why? The why? I call it the big why in life. And you were at a point when you were saying, this, is, this isn't doing it for me. This is great money-wise, and I'm successful. And, and what kind of lawyer were you? I want to ask that, too. I was a divorce attorney. I did divorces for 40 years. And if, if that isn't the the meanest arena you've ever been in. And let me tell you, I was good at it. <laughs> <laughs> were you? I no. kicked ass and took names and I, and I, I couldn't do it anymore. It was sucking my soul every time I did it. So yeah. Yeah. But boy, you're such a lovely person. I mean, <laughs> a beautiful soul inside. it must've been hard to do that all the time. And 
I think it, what it is, is a downer. It must drag you down, you know? And the more I understood this, the spiritual side, the law of attraction and what you put out, you get back. And it's literally right. quantum physics. I, quantum physics is a huge foundation for this. The harder it was to do that because it was such a big contrast because it, it was very hard to compartmentalize my life that I would go to, to court and I was in court two or three days a week and you go in with your fist clenched and your, and you are swinging, man. And I was swinging my, I was fighting and, and then to try to go home and teach this because I've been teaching Bob stuff for seven years now. I've been teaching Mike Dooley stuff for nine years. And so it was really hard to do both of those. So I, I had to transition and, and I was so fortunate I was able to do that. Yes. Yeah. And I think a lot of people, if they really look at it, you can start, you can start moving into that second. You don't have to quit everything, but just start. It'll, it'll raise your vibration naturally when you just start to move in and, and start to do what you're called to do. You don't have to drop all because we did it. You don't have to drop everything, folks. What did Bob always say to me? He, I always heard him say, you know, it's hard to... <laughs> it's hard to raise your vibration and go for your calling or even find your calling if you don't have food on the table. Right. So, yeah. Not advocating everybody quit, but you owe it to yourself to start asking. So if, okay, so you were in this horrible arena of divorce, which is a hard, hard place to be. And, and you wanted to get into the law of attraction. Well, what drew you into the law of attraction? That's I mean, very good. Yeah, that's a good question. So let me kind of give you my story real quick. So um, I'm, I'm old. <laughs> I'm 67. That's not old. But when I got out of law school, like the, my law school was 100 years old, and I was like the 26th woman to have graduated. But I never once, nobody ever told me I couldn't do something because I was a woman. It never even entered my, my mind. And so I went out and started my own law firm and did, and did really well. And, and and I'd never said I wanted to be a divorce attorney, but that's what I was good at. And that's what I attracted. And that's what I did forever. And, and, you know, in the nineties, so I'd already practiced law for what, 20 years at that point in time, you know, like the Celestine prophecy came out. I don't know if you remember that. And then conversations with God. And I remember, I remember reading those and going, Oh my God, that touches my soul. I'm not even sure why. And it was just, it was, I'm a, I'm an avid reader. Oh my God. All I want to do is, is read. And so I just remember reading those in the nineties and there was a yearning and a homesickness. And I, and I couldn't even define what it was, but then you get up and you got to go back to court and beat up people. <laughs> I mean, really. And, wow. and uh, so it started in the nineties and I, and I knew I wanted to do something else. I, I started a, a medical spa before they even had those. I have an invention that I got patented. I started a recyclable bag company and I got it really? trademarked in the in like oh one oh two before it was even out there I'm just I'm just ahead of my time and I'm, I'm just a, I'm a mover and a shaker and I wanted to do something else but you know those things didn't they were different than practicing law but they weren't they weren't this answer to this passion this why I love that what you said why and I also love the the word ease because I, I want to talk about ease in just a minute so anyway oh. in like oh five um, I literally one Sunday and, and it's a Sunday and Sundays were hard for me because I hadn't changed anything the week before and I still had to get up the next day and go to court. So Sundays were this transitional day that were really hard for me, but I tried once again, I don't, didn't know the words that you and I teach now. I didn't necessarily know any of these. This is before The Secret came out. I was still reading, but it was, it, I, I, I hadn't been able to even formulate that why that you were talking about. And, and so um, I, I'm in my home office and, and a football game's on and I'm mad at my husband. I don't want to watch a football game. <laughs> No. And anyway, I think I'm, I'm literally, it's like my heart just exploded in my chest. I think I'm having a heart attack. I can't breathe. I can't catch my breath. I think I'm going to faint. And I yell at my husband, I think I'm having a heart attack. You need to take me to the hospital. And he yells back, can you wait until halftime? <laughs> <laughs> I swear he did that. He swears he didn't. But anyway, uh, six months of tests and there wasn't anything wrong with me. It was panic attacks. Yeah. It was anxiety attacks. It was yeah. the scariest thing because I'm a control freak, man, and I was out of control. And it was my body and it was my higher self going, you're killing yourself, Smalls. I mean, you know, it, it, was, it was really, it, it was a huge wake up. Well, the medicine didn't really help. And I tried that cognitive behavioral therapy. I got those 
discs, you know, right. to them every night and, and started meditating. And all I did was just argue with the person on the CD, which of course <laughs> they weren't paying any attention to me. And I'm cross-examining them and I'm, a qual I'm, you know, I'm saying you're not a qualified expert and I'm objecting. And so, you know, that wasn't working. And, but, you know, it talked about meditation and I don't remember, there was something in there that talked about Buddhism and there was something in there that reminded me of like the Celestine prophecy. So I went back and I got my books and one book led to another, to another. So from 05 to probably 2011, once again, I really hadn't defined it. So the secret comes out. And so I finally at least get to say there's a tribe out there. This has been yeah. defined before. I'm from the Midwest. We're pretty, you know, we're pretty behind I the times. And, and <laughs> um, so I read and Eckhart Tolle was huge because it was staying in the present moment, which once again, I wasn't even aware that that was a concept. And uh, I would read another one and another one. I used to say, I still do, but there's a Barnes and Noble agent, Angel, once we can go back in to those. But I would go in and I would find the perfect book at the perfect time to, to take me on that journey. Isn't that amazing? Um, it it is. What works? I always say when you ask, stuff starts showing up. That's how it works for me too. Absolutely. So yeah. you know, one, one of my best stories is I'm, I'm in Barnes and Noble. I'm going back to the alternative section, which is always in the very back of the bookstore because all the crazy people go back there. You know, yeah. you got your sunglasses on and got your yeah. collar turned up. And anyway, I'm going down the science aisle just to get to that. Yes. And I am not kidding you. A book literally falls off the shelf in front of me in the science aisle, which I would never have gone down. It's yeah. called The God Theory by Bernard Hayes. He's an astrophysicist. Yeah. And it, it, it said, there's science behind this. Okay. And as an attorney, it was really hard for me to be able to grasp this and believe it if there wasn't some science, because we're a science-based society, right? Rainbows and unicorns are fun, but yep. unless, unless you've got some science behind it. So, man, it was like, you know, a slap in the face. So I uh, did that and then signed up for Mike Dooley's Notes from the Universe. That's kind of a, everything's a coincidence, but we know there's no such thing as coincidence. There's no but, such thing. Uh, you know, I run into a, 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 a lady that literally lives, had lived three blocks from me for about five years, but I never had seen her because I don't, didn't look up. You know, I wasn't staying in the right. now. Ran into her. I had represented her 14, 15 years before. We start talking. She tells me about Notes from the Universe. I go home and I... Uh, you know, it, which are daily things. Everybody, I love them. You can go to tut.com, T-U-T.com and sign up for them. They're daily messages from the universe. He tells you, and he, he, he you know, he says, hey, Paula, you know, so it's all right. I love it. Well, cool. um, I sign up for those and they are, they're just all notes that really are channeled by him from the universe. And they are very cool. He's got a very good thing there. Yeah. Yeah. And he, it touches my soul. So anyway, within a month after me signing this up, I get a, a, a note that's a, you know, email that says, Hey, we're going to start a new thing. We're going to train trainers to teach infinite possibilities, which is my right. uh, New York times bestseller. And I said, Oh my God, that's what I'm supposed to de do. Once again, I had never really put it together or said, so this was 2011. So I go the very first time he trains anybody. I'm the first one that ever does it. And he and I become good friends. I'm, I'm on the stage with him a couple of times. I love it. And I'm teaching it, but I'm teaching it in my living room, you know, right. to, but it's, it's still okay. But, you still know, okay. I want, yeah, I, I just, I wanted to, to up my game. I wanted to step up. I wanted to play big and you can't go into corporations and businesses with rainbows and unicorns, right? You got to no, have... If you're going to do a corporate program, if you're going to have anybody take you seriously, there's got to be data and evidence and there's got to be, you know, some, some background to it. So I've been trying to put together a corporate program with some other women and it's like, you know, herding cats. <laughs> you had a bunch of women. Oh, funny. funny. <laughs> it is. And uh, I literally woke up one morning, uh, opened Facebook there's, there's something from one of my friends that says Bob Proctor. It doesn't say become a consultant. And I just, and I said, I know him from, I know him from the secret. I really hadn't done, I hadn't done any research, hadn't read anything. So I hit that thinking it was just going to go to a page about him. And it goes directly to a consultant's page to, to take his message to corporations. For the world. And so I call them, they get Bob on the phone. Uh, yeah. That night, they get Sandy Gallagher, who is his partner that helps set this yeah. whole thing up on the phone. Yeah. Um, 
you know, I, I'm from Wichita, Kansas, and his very first big success was in Wichita, Kansas. This is where he came, and he, and he did one of his big insurance speeches. Right. And so he loves That's, Wichita. It was for Prudential, right? Yes, yes. See, yeah. you know this speech. And so, <laughs> so he, he just really identified with me and I was an attorney and I've been very successful. And, you know, he says, tell me how much you made in the past and I can tell you what your self, you know, esteem is. And so he, he and I became good friends. I became a consultant for him, uh, helped him with his, his matrix two or three times went to, uh, to help facilitate yeah. that, um, was in his inner circle, one of his top consultants, been to his house, absolutely door's oh. wife. Um, but, you know, I, I, and I loved it. But okay, it was in Wichita. I'm, I'm, I, I was only doing it with people that I knew, with companies that I knew, and I went to give speeches, right. and that's how I would do it. And I wanted to, I wanted to play big. I want, I wanted to be what you are. <laughs> I wanted to be, I wanted to play big, and I didn't know how to get on the internet. I didn't know how to do that, and I wanted my own program. So I started my own program about two or three years ago, which is Good. we all teach the same thing, right? I mean, we all Pretty teach. Much. Yeah. The laws of the universe. I love well, attraction and yeah, and I do more of the spiritual side, but that law of attraction is Yeah, is, but it's all the same it, thing. It, it is all tied together. It is oh, one absolutely. Big, incredible universe that we're all exploring. Paula, what are these laws of the universe? Oh, I love that. So, you know, everybody hears the law of attraction because you've seen the secret, but that's a secondary law. The primary yeah. law is the law of vibration, which means that at a subatomic level, everything is vibrating and it's vibrating at a preordained frequency. And there's a tree is always going to be vibrating as a tree. But we as consciousness, as spirits, because we get to choose a thought, which is a, which produces a feeling, which is just a a frequency that our body is in, and we recognize that frequency and we give it a name. We call it an emotion. That's our energy in motion. So we, because we're spiritual consciousness, we get to choose what vibration our body is in, and we, we don't, don't even know that. We don't even know we have that power. Uh, right. The vast majority of us are in autopilot 95% of our day because we're, our subconscious mind controls what we do. Yeah. So the, the primary law is the law of vibration. You need to understand that because then you can, you can actually access your power. The secondary law is the law of attraction, which says whatever you are, whatever you are vibrating at, that is what you attract more of. People think if they say, I want something, or, you know, I'm unhappy, I want to be happy, you're going to get that. No, you have no. to become on a vibrational level what it is that you want to be before you can actually attract more of that into your life. And it's not as hard as you think, which no. leads me into the law of gestation, which is the one we yeah. were talking about. And right. into what you say, ease and betterment, which I love that. I write that down because I'm having you on my show. <laughs> <laughs> But so, so ease and betterment. So this is kind of was my big epiphany. So I had tried for years to like sell my business or have somebody come over and start practicing with me. And then they would take over the business and I would get a residual income from them because I made yeah. a lot of money. I had three generations of people that would come to me. I mean, I had been here a long time and every time I tried on the material world and tried to boss people around and control things, That's it never worked right it doesn't because you're pushing you're making you're absolutely on a, absolutely you're on a whole different vibration absolutely exactly and so i would i would try to manipulate over here and control over here and figure this out and i was writing a book and i was button heads with my editor and and i didn't know how to get my message out and and so like in october of was it 2018 2017 i just said to myself I'm done. I am done fighting this. I surrender. And surrender was never a word I had in my dictionary because I was a damn fighter. You know, right. I was, I was, I was in the competitive plane, not the creative mm -hmm. plane. And I just said, I surrender universe. I don't know how to do this. And all I'm going to do is get happy. And I listened to Abraham Hicks, you know who she is, I right? Constantly. Totally. I, I listened to Pandora. I would turn on the new age guitar station. Yeah. And it's like having, like you're in a movie and there's a score in the background and I would not watch TV. I would anything I could do to get happy. I just said, I, I don't know how to do it except I'm going to, I'm going to get on a different vibration. Cause if I teach this shit, it, I, need to, <laughs> I need to do this shit. Right. <laughs> That's exactly right. You have to, you have to be able to live it. And if you're going to teach it, 
<laughs> definitely. But to get there, you have to make the changes in your life. That's what people don't understand. And it's a moment-to-moment -moment change. It's not a big yeah. change. It's just staying no. in the moment and getting happy in that moment. Because yes. people think you got to go back to school. and you, you just have to understand the power that's in the moment and the power that's in your own frequency at that point in time. But let me just real quick tell you how it just kind of turned out. So I, 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 had, I had gained 100 pounds in the last, you know, 10 years because – I'm sure, you know, it's because it's I was weighed down spiritually and my body was weighed down spiritually and I couldn't lose weight and, and I wanted to get my book published and I wanted to sell my business. And I just put those intentions out there, but I wasn't trying to make it work. So right. long story short, go get my hair done. My hairdresser says she's going to have weight loss surgery. I'm, I judge her. And she goes, just, just, tr just take steps to see if this is something because being 100 pounds overweight is a... Heck of a lot worse for you than maybe going through this. So I said, I'm just going to take the first step. And you guys out there, that's all you need to do. You need yep. to take one step, right? So mm -hmm. I check to see if my insurance covers it. Well, it doesn't cover it. It's tens of thousands, but I'm going on Medicare the next month, and it covers it 100%. I mean, within 30 days, I go, okay, uh, that's one hint from the universe. Yes. And then you have to have some medical procedures done beforehand to make sure you're okay. Well, I have a medical procedure done, and they discover something that is wrong with my esophagus and stomach, and they said, you could have died if you hadn't had that done if you hadn't had something i had no symptoms he said it is a miracle you came in so we can actually correct that so if i hadn't done this i wouldn't have gone in to have that procedure that's so right that, it's that, working for you now instead of you making it you know yes, what i mean that was two and we're talking a gestation right i planted the seed <laughs> In October, it's now mm -hmm. probably February or March. The third thing is, and, and I'm going to be very vulnerable here, you have to get a psych eval to make sure that <laughs> it's okay to do this. Well, I knew every psychologist in town because I did custody battles. And I used them all the time in my custody battles. So, And look at, listen to that word, battles, because that's basically what it was. And, and so I found a psychologist I'd never heard of in a, in a building I've never been to. I made sure there were no attorneys in that building. I made an appointment on a Friday afternoon about four, so I would not run into anybody, so I could go in and do this little thing. So as, I, as I'm walking in, I run into this attorney. And I said, Brad, what the heck are you doing here? He goes, I just moved in. Paula, five minutes later, you would not have caught me. I just moved in and I'm leaving. I said, but Brad, you're over there at the other law firm. He says, weirdest thing. About a month ago, I get a call from a big firm. They're wanting to start a new law firm in town. They offered me a boatload of money to start this new law firm and they want me to get as many new clients as I possibly can. And my higher self said, ding, 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 ding. And I just said, who's your upline? And within two weeks, Alina, I had sold my business for a, a huge amount of money to, wow. to be able to retire on the day that I had set, July 1st of 2018. You don't sell a private practice when you're an individual practitioner. But they That's did. They took my name. I mean, they, they and I helped them market it. So I, I sold that. And um, within... Two weeks of that, my book got published, and then Jules, bless Jules's heart, she found me, and she was on, I was on her radio show, and within like 60 days, she calls and she said, we had such a huge response on your show that we want you to have your own radio show. So within, you know, nine months, there's a gestation period, I had literally, and I didn't make it happen. Right. I just decided to get happy. And take one step and be brave enough, you guys, to take one step. And then when another step shows up, you take that other step. That's yeah. your law of gestation. It takes a while for some things to, uh, to, to literally form. Well, the gestation, the law of gestation is a time of growth for you. Right. So you uh, getting yourself into that happy was a growth because that's not where you were. <laughs> that is so well, true. <laughs> you know, so really you're taking steps to create a happier life and you know you're really interested in all this stuff. So you're building it and you know you don't want to do what you're doing anymore. The universe sees that you're on a higher vibration. But the biggest key that everybody misses, which you stated, was that the biggest key that you stated was that you surrendered yes and when you surrender people don't we don't always understand we think all right universe you're going to co-pilot with me but the thing is you have freedom of choice that is one of our greatest gifts the universe will not step in and help you 
unless you ask. It can't because the freedom of choice is I do it or I'll surrender or I don't want any help. It can't help you if you don't want any help. You've, when you surrender, it allows it to come in and make the magic happen. And I thought surrender meant to give up. And what no. it really just means is to let go of, yeah. of the control and the, our, our factual reality, right? Exactly. Surrendering to my higher self, my spiritual self, surrendering exactly. to, and, and having, I just got off of a Abraham Hicks one where they're talking about faith and faith is knowing is absolute knowing that you're going to be okay. Not faith in an unknown, but know enough that, so when I surrendered, I, I, I knew everything was going to be okay, no matter That's what right. happened. And I wasn't going to be the one that had to direct exactly how it went. Now we have to still take action, right? Yes. We, still, we still have to make a decision to take action. Make decision to take action and, and follow the guidance throughout and pull together what you think you need. You make that primary, you can make that primary plan. You can think, okay, if I'm going to write a book, I need an editor. If I need <laughs> I need to actually write it. <laughs> I actually, <laughs> <the> fuck, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I actually need to put something on paper. Well, yeah. and I love that what you said. What your is ease. So when yeah. I got to an ease with it, instead yeah. of me trying to make it happen, when I got to an ease of it, and and didn't put a timetable on it, right. Uh, and, and just trusted. But you got. You, you, we still have to take those steps. We still have to be yeah. courageous and take a Are step. You, but it's a different mindset when you're seeing that next, because they're coincidences, right? I never went to this building. I never, I mean, I saw this attorney maybe four times a year. It would not have happened if I would have tried to coordinate it. Ah, we have to go to a break. You're listening to Magical Moments, and I'm your host, Elena Chapman. We will be right back. Welcome back. You're listening to Magical Moments with Elena Chapman, helping you find ease and betterment with every episode. Download more on your favorite podcast platform. Now, here's Elena. Welcome back to Magical Moments for that ease and betterment. Okay, guys. Now, I have Paula Kid Casey. She is the lawyer of attraction. You know that law of attraction, those wonderful universal laws. And we talked about what brought her from a lawyer all the way back into now what she's doing is helping people with the law of attraction. She's got a fabulous show we're going to talk more about. Well, the, when, you, when you surrender and let go, you keep doing what you're doing to become. That's the whole secret. Right. So you are going to the coffee shop like I did and journaling every day. But you've already said, okay, I know this is going somewhere. I know what I want. But the, I'm going to let it go, but I'm going to take the baby steps so that I can grow into what I want to become. So I keep working, but the, it, what it releases is all the resistance. When we make it happen, as you know, when we make it happen, all of a sudden what we do is we offer resistance into right. our because this doesn't work out. Oh, I'm mad. Okay, I got to do it this way. And, and you've got this fight going on. But my gosh, yeah, when you let go and you just, the guidance can kick in. The guidance that, can kick in. And you know, like Bob says, we've, there's three kinds of goals. There's A-type goals that yeah, yeah. everybody does every day. And there's B-type goals. And that's what most people think are their goals, that I want to go back and get a degree. And I know how to do a B-type goal. I ne not necessarily am going to do a B-type goal, but I know to go to, you know, get registered and go to class and, you know, take notes. Right. That's a B-type goal, but the C-type goals are the ones I want everybody to understand that they're these huge goals. You don't know how you're going to accomplish them. If you know how to accomplish them, you're not going, you're going sidewards. You're not going forward. Just yep. start thinking, what's the biggest thing you want to do? If you know how to do it, it's not a big enough goal. It's just putting out there, this is what I want to do. How, how am I going to feel when I accomplish that? I'm going to, I'm going to work toward the feeling and then I'm going to let universe, source, God direct my steps. And, exactly. and we, we don't have to know. We don't, you know, I love Martin Luther King. You don't have to see the whole staircase. You just you have don't. to see the next step, right? And that will get a little bit confused because when they say, in, like in visualization, it says, see yourself in that. Well, sometimes if you're being guided, you can't see yourself, but you know darn well how you will feel. 
And if you can tap into that feeling, that is worth a million of seeing. It's Be the feeling, right? It's the feeling. The universe to kick in and make it happen in the best way possible. And my gosh, when you do that, it turns out millions bigger than you could ever imagine anyway. I just saw a, a thing on Facebook. It says, what if everything worked out better than you ever imagined? And I went, oh my God, I love that because we are limited by our, our imagination because if yeah. we don't think something is bigger, then we're not going to be open to the coincidences. You know, one of the facts that I love because I love quantum physics, that's the basis of what I Me teach. Too. And yeah. I love neuroplasticity. Uh, you know, yeah. Joe Dispenza does that. And, um, you know, epigenetics, which is Bruce Lipton does that, that uh, our environment does our, controls our cells. But that there are like 10 billion bits of information in our environment at any point in time. But our brain can only access about 2,000 bits of information in any second. But our yeah. brain only feeds us 50 bits of information every second in our environment based on what our conditioning is. So if we're unhappy or if we're in lack and scarcity or if we're in fear, that is all our subconscious mind is going to show us, these 50 bits of information. Now, there's yeah. 1,950 other bits out there that will change your life. They're already there. You just have to change your frequency and then your subconscious mind starts showing you. That's when we say, oh, that was such a coincidence that I ran into Brad or, you know, I'm driving along the street and it's the same billboard. It's been there forever, but I look up and it answers the question that I was just thinking about. So we start seeing different things in our environment that, that actually get us in different directions. And we call them serendipities. We call them coincidences. But they are always been there. We now get to see them because we're on a different frequency. It's like a radio. It's like a radio show, right? It's like a radio wave. It's like a radio wave. You put on, I tell, I tell my listeners all the time, if you put on a country music station, <laughs> it's country music, you're not going to get Bach. You're not going to get Mozart. And if exactly. you sit there and gripe, you're still not going to get Mozart. You yeah. can gripe all you want to. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. You have to be on the station. And, and when you're on that vibration, that station, that's what you see. That's also what you receive. And that's what people don't always understand. You know, you have to be, if you really want to make money, you have to be on that vibration. If you really want to, uh, and that's the vibration of service. That's the vibration of, me, you know, thinking of how can I serve to the best of my ability and then I get paid for it, but it's putting your best out there and watching it all develop. Well, and it's, and it's a feeling of abundance and it doesn't have to be abundance of money because people will say, but I don't have money. So how can I feel? Bye. But it's an abundance. It's abundance mentality because the universe doesn't know if you're thinking about the money in your bank account or, Bye. or the leaves on a tree. But you know, one of the things that we, in my program is that you have to come up with five different gratitudes every day. They have to be different right. every day. So right. people are getting to the point that they're thanking the universe for asphalt because there's so much asphalt out there because it makes your drive so much easier when you go. I mean, That's so right. you get into, you know, there's, there's, we, we both know that, you know, um, appreciation and, and great gratitude is the most important thing you can get it's into. Biggest. It's and also so, the way to raise your, yeah, and it, and it ties in directly with abundance, and people don't understand that the gratitude yeah. ties in with abundance. Totally. Because there's three levels of gratitude. There's thinking thankfulness, which is really where we you, normally always are, which is just in our heads. That's in our conscious mind. It doesn't do much. Right. But then when we start appreciating things, that's a feeling. We, we put more value in it. So that is a feeling in our body. But when we appreciate things and we know we have enough of it, then we act in generosity, which is what you were saying in service. And we actually, there's, we have enough, so we want to give, and that's generosity. And yes. when you tell the universe that you have enough that you want to give, the universe says, hey, she's on the frequency of abundance. I'm going to give her more just because Absolutely. she's on the frequency of abundance. So they're all tied together, and they're just feelings. You don't have to go out and beat, no, beat the pavement. It's, it's a decision in the moment to think a better feeling thought. Oh, everyone who has ever made a ton of money or success or true happiness has always learned it's inside work. It is inside of us. We have, we have, to, we have to be the ones to make it happen inside. And it comes out 
but it comes with us raising our vibration. It comes with us using our imagination the best we can. It comes with our connection to source or God or, or the universe, whatever you want to call it. It is, it's inside us. And when it happens inside and you feel that true abundance and happiness, that's when things start happening outside. And that's what I call the magic. Stuff starts happening with ease and it starts happening with flow. In fact, it happens so much. You're like, what in the name of heaven is it's, happening? It's literally just turning a spigot and then you've got this ease and flow and it's like you're floating down the well, river. You know, yeah. forever I felt like I was trudging uphill in the mud and, you know, I've lost a hundred pounds and I got into the, it's, but now it's like literally floating down the river and, and it's, there's an ease. I love the fact you keep saying ease. And, you know, this has been a really interesting time that we've been in because we haven't been able to go outside you know and i think the universe is saying exactly what you just said we need to go yeah. inside we inside have to ourselves go. inside it's quiet the people who did really well went inside and the people who were going anxiety and going crazy they did not they were all they need the outside to feed them it's very interesting they're, they're like um they let the outside conditions affect them inside. And the people who went inside are contained within themselves. They understand it. It's a, a very interesting phenomenon we just had right now. Well, very that's what Bob teaches. There's a difference between responding and reacting. You know, if you oh. react to the outside world, you're letting the environment dictate what your vibration you're going to be in and you lose all power. But when you decide you're going to respond from the inside out and you do that by quieting your mind, prying open a space where you're not just immediate knee jerk, five senses reaction. You know, right. he, he teaches the six intellectual faculties. I exactly. put him in a different uh, form. I call them the whimper factors, which is will, yeah. imagination, memory, perception, intuition, and reason. Reasoning. And, yeah. Uh, and, and, and when you learn to pry open the present moment and respond differently, everything changes. And this was a perfect time for people to be quiet and to look within themselves and to do so much more of that. I think people have realized that simplicity and ease is more, I think people, more and more people are coming to wanting that simplicity and ease in their life. I think they're I more, think so too. To, 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 yeah, it was nice. It was nice to have the ease and simplicity. And I mean, for all the listeners out there to really feel that wonderful um, being able to be with your family when you wanted to be with your family. To, to have fun with them when you wanted to have fun. That raises your vibration right there. The busyness is what gets in our way, folks. The busyness is what keeps us in the condition of the, what's going on outside of us instead of building what we want in our world. Because we think busy and hurry means we're getting more done. And oh. it's just a, it's a negative vibration. It's fear. It's that you don't have enough time and, and, you, you know, hurry and busy is I don't have enough time. I got to get this done. And all you're going to get is more is fear and lack because that's what you're putting out. So yeah, taking a big deep breath and staying in the present moment. Whew, that's a it, hard thing. It, you know, it's not a hard thing to do. It's not a hard thing to do. But people fight you. <laughs> they fight you. I say do meditation and they fight me. Uh, it's you just a breath. It's just literally a breath in and out. One breath in and out is a little mini vacation, a little yeah. mini, mini meditation. People, I think, are scared of losing control. And they don't understand that the, that the real control comes from the quietness, the letting go. Oh, my gosh. That, to have that choice to be able to do that. When we don't, we're not, we're not in control, folks. We're actually a slave to our circumstances. And to our conditioned mind, which we have had no control over. You know, our power lies when we become aligned with when our we, higher self and a frequency that we want to be on. And that's where our power comes, when we're aligned. Power comes, and it takes us getting quiet. It takes us building happiness in our lives. It, that's where our control is. We can only control us. Our we frequency. Can, we need to become masters of our frequency. We got to change our, our identity from becoming victims of outside circumstances. Exactly. To becoming masters of our frequency. That's it. And that changes everything. And when you change your frequency, you'll see that the things that do not serve that frequency fall away. So that's the annoyance so will fall away. The job that's not serving you will fall away. The narcissistic person in your life will fall away. 
because you're not on their vibration anymore. And it's and ease and flow, right? It's ease and flow. The ease and flow. Yeah. Paula, it has been so fabulous to have you on today. I loved it. I've got to have you on my show. We've got to figure out something we can do together. We're, we're just so much alike on some, everything we, we teach. Have so many things. We really do. It's so nice to talk to a fellow. I know. A fellow Bob Proctorite. Is that what? Yeah. <laughs> Bob, I think of the right word. <laughs> a Bob That's funny. <laughs> that is so cool. But anyway, so tell the people how they can get hold of you and what they, um, you know, how can they find out about your show, your book, everything? Oh, thank you so much. Well, I'm on the Law of Attraction Radio Network. My name is Paula Kid Casey, but I'm also on all the podcasts, all the podcasts. If you go in and put my name in, you'll get the podcast. I have a YouTube channel. Uh, my my uh, website is lawyerofattraction.com. But you can also get me by PaulaKidCasey.com. So if, if you get on there, there's a really quick, fun, seven-day magic of intention that uh, you can sign up for. And, and, it's, and it's a fun, quick, uh, just to understand how much one intention in the morning can change your life. Uh, oh, my yeah. book is on Amazon, The Law Year and the Law of Attraction. So you can go there. Uh, my program is called The Fast Path, Your Path to Freedom, Abundance, Satisfaction, and Time. If you get on my website, there's a quick little video that tells you all about it. It allows you to contact me. I would love to have anybody get a hold of me if they want more information. Um, I love doing this. This is my passion. I love helping people transform into that butterfly that they were meant to be. So. Yeah. I appreciate so much that you reached out to me and that we could connect like this because that energy, you know, where two or more are gathered in his name and uh, uh, there's that energy. And I appreciate it so it much. Oh, and I'm just so pleased you were on. We've offered a lot about that <laughs> laws of the universe and especially the law of gestation, vibration, you know, everything, everything that the law, you guys look up the laws of the universe because there are, you'll start to see how these laws are part of our life all the time. Let, look at um, cause and effect, polarity, you know, where there's a yes, there's a no, there's polarity, things that really apply in our life every day. So that when you get to like the law of vibration, it may all make sense. It all makes sense. And they all work. They work exactly like the law of gravity. People go, oh, this, this isn't working for me. And the law of attraction is working for you. You're getting exactly the vibration <laughs> that you're putting out. You, all you, you may not understand, but it works all the time, every time. It works for everybody, anywhere. So once you become aware of these natural laws of the universe, um, you, can, you can allow them to, so you work in, the, in, in, in harmony with them. Fantastic. Thank you so much for allowing me to be on. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm so happy to have you. And I am going to now give them a nugget and we're going to be done. But you guys look into Paula if you're interested in learning more. She's a dynamic person and at least get on her show at Law of Attraction. I'm on there too. So just th there are so many cool people. You really do need to check out that, that station. So Thank you so much so much and just keep doing the wonderful things you're doing paula and you too i'll talk to you later thank you so okay. much bye and for everyone out there i want to really keep that intention of you know it's it's really something this little nugget is all about you starting to have that more ease and flow and we talked a little bit about that surrender. I think Paula put it very nicely, and I'm going to continue that. The, the whole idea of making it happen. I'm going to give you a short story so you can really see. You know, there was a time when I was trying to put together an event, and I was trying to do it in a town that I didn't know anyone. Why don't I let people lead me into that? And we had all the great names and everything, and, and I was paying a lot of money. And I remember we weren't getting the people in. And, and I was in this, the person who I was working with was in the old school. You have the event to bring the people in. And I just thought, this is really hard. And, and the whole idea of no one knowing who we were, but yet we're trying to put on this event. And I just saw a sinking. <laughs> Lots of money going down the drain and sinking. And I remember... I just sat and I thought, this is too hard. This is not the universe. 
And so when I went into a meditation, I just got really quiet and I said, all right, somehow I got off track. I know what I want. I want to help people reach in to really connect, connect to their soul and to the spirit and have this ease and flow because everything is under the understanding of having abundance and letting go, but walking towards. Then we can enjoy the journey. I want to enjoy my journey. I want to bring people into this because they want to enjoy their journey. And then I let it go. And before you know it, all of a sudden, I get a call. Right after that, I get a call from two people who are very close to me saying, Elena, we need to change this. I said, yes, we do. What do you propose? They said, hey, we need to put a program together. And so we made that event into a program. And I've done that ever since. And the program sold out within the first 10 minutes <laughs> of putting it on the internet. I can't believe it. So we got to put it out again. And that's the inevitable you. That inevitable you is coming out again. But the first time I put it out, just like that. But see, I had to surrender. Want that joy, that ease in my life. You've got to want it. You've got to feel it. You've got to make it happen. Not really make it happen. Create the environment. If something's not easy, look at why it's not easy. Because you're on the wrong road. There's always two or three ways to do something. You have to look at it and say, all right, this is not the right way. Universe, God, um, spirit, whatever you like to call. I'm on the wrong road. Correct me onto the right. And then allow it to happen. Raise that vibration. You owe it to yourself. You owe it to yourself. Because living the hard way is our choice. And we never, never have to live that choice. All right. So you've got a lot of incredible information today. Take a look at your life. To, is, is it everything you want? Is this stuff hard? How can I lighten it? What do I really want? And a really easy thing, set an intention for the day, every day. If you set an intention of always having abundance and joy in your life, you'll start getting that back in, in ways that you can never even imagine. And then that grows it. And then you get more into it. And then more starts coming in. Then the money starts coming in. Then people start filling your life like crazy. It just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It's your turn. You are listening to Magical Moments. And I am Elena Chapman. And we had such a good time with Paula Kidd. I also want to tell you guys, we are having such a wonderful response to soulmanifesto.com. I would love to have you be part of this incredible group. We met last night and we talked about changing the beliefs that keep us from having that vibration of abundance, that keep us from having that incredible place of feeling like we are happy in our lives. And I love it because I see so much progress just in the discussions from the groups. So if you are interested and you have Thursday nights at 7 o'clock free, <laughs> which I hope you do, then register. You just go to soulmanifesto.com and it says Green Terra Group right there. And actually, guys, pretty soon I really want you on soulmanifesto.com because we've changed the whole look of it. All the shows are on there. We've changed. Um, there's so much new stuff. You really have to look at it. I've got my new book coming out very soon called Hello Soul. And that is a book that is all about your journey, my journey. I take you on my journey of how I connected with my soul. And then I offer ways for you on top of my story. If you're interested, it is not that you have to do it that way. It is that you get to join in on my journey. And sometimes I, I don't like telling people what to do. I like to show 
and then offer different ways that they can do it. But it's up to you, your choice. But first you got to see that it is possible. And that's what I love about Hello Soul. So if you're interested in that book, let me know. Go into the comments section of soulmanifesto.com and let me know and I can get it pre-ordered for you. The last thing, hey, you know, we got an Ask Elena coming up, folks. And I really, really would love, love to have your questions. The last time I did an Ask Elena, I have to tell you, the questions were incredible. I just so respect how much you guys are really looking within yourself and saying, hey, you know, this is unclear. I want to get this straight so I can grow. I, I am finding that your questions are so fun. I give each one a lot of thought before I answer it because I really want to bring you the guidance from spirit. And I have to say, I just... I'm always excited to look. So if you have questions for, for Ask Elena, then please go to soulmanifesto.com, go to that comment section, and just say, hey, Ask Elena, and then ask your question. And you can put your first name. I love first names, and I love to know where you're from because that just makes it fun for me. I love to see the different places in the world. If you don't want to put your name, just put where you're from. That's, that's cool for me. But... You know, you really do owe it to yourself to be happy. And I know we have a lot going on in this world, but believe it or not, you can still find happiness. And when you do, starting with those gratitudes, the type of music you play, trust that, that feeling, Paula said it and I feel it every day, that things will work out. They will work out. And trust the guidance you hear from the small voice. Not the, junk, the, the very loud, monkey, critical mind, which is your subconscious and all the things you learned in the past. Sometimes it's your mother. Sometimes it's a teacher. Sometimes it's somebody else. It's not even you. But listen to the small voice that says, Hey, Elena, you got this. You're going to be fine. You know? Let's, let's try this. Let's try this. And that's what I'll hear. And then it'll tell me what to do. That's how to live. And that is so much easier. Stay connected to that beautiful soul and divine inside, which is the soul. Stay connected to all people around you, even if it's, if it's from a distance. Form that community of love and stay connected to Source. Namaste. This has been Magical Moments with Elena featuring Elena Chapman. If you missed an episode, download it now on iTunes, Spotify, TuneIn, CastBox, Deezer, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, or your favorite podcast platform. Learn more online at soulmanifesto.com. Podcasts by Federated Media.